good day everyone how are you doing this is the XA of Magna crypto back again with another video in today's video i'm going to be covering a few news articles that i saw on the interweb and also just a tiny little look at the market as it is behaving a little suspect at the moment so without further ado let's get this show on the road So before we get started, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, like this video. Also, I've got a free course for beginners. If you want to learn the fundamentals about the crypto market and how to get started straight away, click on the link in the description and enroll to the course. And also I've got a private telegram group where I put my more regular insight, a lot of charts and TA. So link for that is also in the description. Now with that housekeeping out of the way, let's get into this video. So first and foremost, we've obviously closed for the month of, we've obviously closed for the month of November. But now if you look at the total market cap, you can see that we've actually re-tested um, a very key level, which was the uh, candle closure for the month of December 2017, which is the highest closure of the bull run. Of the previous bull run sorry so we've now broken past it and have now retested it so this is a very good sign that it's now acting as support we still need to see further confirmation that it is support by obviously uh this rejection but further than that is to see a grey candle in the opposite direction we may get a scenario where we go further down below this and then go back above this also goes in line we look at Bitcoin so Bitcoin has rejected the previous all-time we've actually broken the previous all-time high by a little bit but since that point we have now rejected quite a bit and um, down to 18,000 the low 18,000 level but the fact that we've corrected a little bit is a positive sign we can't continue to have positive months on and on and on without some kind of correction to be honest, as I've said in previous videos, I was expecting a much bigger correction, but if this is all we get, I'm not going to complain. So I'm expecting potentially a quiet month for this for December, um, and then potentially in the new year will break all-time highs uh, properly. But we'll we'll have to see as as time continues. If we look at the weekly time frame, we can see that in the last few weeks we've actually retested a very key level at 16,000 which was previous resistance and have now obviously attempted we've broken the all-time high but we are at a key resistance level of 19,000 that's what we are right now today so once we break past this and close above this on a weekly time frame that's going to be a very very bullish indication obviously we've whipped um, spiked past broken the all-time high but we've rejected from this key resistance level at 19,000 or 18,953. But if we close above this, I think that'd be a very bullish sign. So the rest of the market is looking like it's in the red today. Obviously we've had a lot of price gains in the past few weeks. So this is completely understandable. Nothing to worry about really. Just a few percentages in the red for crypto. This is completely normal. So let's go on to the news articles because these are some very interesting news articles. So firstly, we have one um, from sky.com, a very prominent uh, news company in the UK. Facebook backed cryptocurrency changes name in an effort to seek approval. Let's get into this. So a struggling cryptocurrency backed Facebook has changed its name in the bid to get off the ground and, and approved by regulators. However, after a number of backers pulled out of the scheme, including payments providers, Visa and PayPal, and questions being raised about its privacy and financial stability, as it has been rebranded as DM. And this is obviously, you know, a typical marketing scheme. When you change a name, you rebrand re something, you essentially delete its history and you can start over again. It's a very clever move from Facebook. So the original, name, the original name was tied to an early iteration of the project uh, that received a difficult reception from, from regulators. We have dramatically changed that proposition. 
DM will now aim to launch a single dollar back digital coin, possibly as early as January, but it will first need approval from the Swiss market's watchdog. I mean, when they say they've dramatically changed our proposition, they may have altered a few things, but essentially it's still the same project. Nothing really has changed that much. Now, this is very interesting. Before, I believe it was a basket of currencies that it was going to use as its reserve but now it's going to use just a dollar backed digital coin. I think this is a, a strategy just to get them off the ground, just to say to regulate, it's just only dollar backed. You don't have to worry too much, it's not an international thing. Uh, and so that's probably their plot to get their foot in the door so that they can continue on with their original plan down the road. Once they've got approval, I'm sure they can wiggle around to do what they really wanna do. So DM wants to set itself apart from other cryptocurrencies by focusing on aspects that concern Western governments and regulators. This is quite, a, you know, for those who are more familiar uh, in the crypto game, this is quite a funny statement because they're not even a cryptocurrency to begin with. They're just a basket of fiat currency packaged as one. So there's no, there's no comparison to real crypto. But to the you know to the average person, this and this they may they may seem like similar things, um, in that Libra is a crypto as well. But the truth is they are absolutely because the essence of cryptocurrencies is the fact that it's decentralized. There's no one central authority that rules that you know has the power. It's it's the power is within the network, the users that support the network. Whereas Libra is obviously controlled by a few corporate elites. So that's the end of the um, article, but it's interesting. I mean, this is a typical marketing plot, change the name, reduce the, the, the requirements to get your foot in the door and then do whatever you want. So it's, it's, um, it's, it looks like they're probably gonna get approval eventually. And you know, their original plan will happen eventually. Slightly worrying times to be honest. Not as worrying as this article here though. US Congresswoman introduces the Stable Act to ban illegal stable coins. So the new bill seeks to make stable coins illegal without approvals from relevant government bodies, dubbed stable coin tethering and bank licensing enforcement. A very clever play with the words, which makes stable act. The new bill requires the potential issuer of a stable coin to gain approvals from the Fed, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and um, relevant banking bodies, the, FD, the FDIC. According to the official press release, any person involved in the issuance of a stablecoin or related product without the written approval from regulated authorities will be considered illegal. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious what they're trying to do. And I mean, there's the positive side to it is that, you know, no, no one, with bad intention will be able to make a stable coin. Things like US, USDT, the, the, very, the most popular stable coin, which is, has a, a very, very shady uh, background, probably would not be able to get a uh, license in this, if this bill gets approved. So there's the good side of that, but the obviously the, the downside of this act is the fact that it's going to stifle innovation. It might be very difficult for a, a, a company to actually start a stablecoin, even with good intentions. So this is the negative side of it. The crypto community, as I've just mentioned, expressed disappointment over the bill and termed the act as a discouraging step. Now, obviously, any law that is approved, any bill that gets you know put forward against crypto is not going to be, uh, ex you know, it's not going to be accepted. But there is a good side to it, which is, which is higher standard, essentially. Now, moving on to Christine Lagarde. She, she's bashed Bitcoin and Libra. This is, is, I mean, everyone's got the, essentially what you're going to understand is everyone has their own interest. So this is what she's doing. Lagarde criticized Bitcoin and other stablecoins, but spoke positively about the digital euro. The official article published on 30th November in Lena Ors Lemur's magazine stated that crypto users cannot re rely on digital assets to maintain a stable value. Yep, that definitely grew that. 
because they are highly volatile, it's still a very new market. Lagarde bashed the speculative and highly volatile nature of cryptocurrencies. I don't know why she's bashing it because it's a new market. There's a lot of potential and it's not been realized as of yet. So people will speculate on it. The same way people speculate on the stock market or any other market. So there's no need to really bash them. It's innovation that's still growing, that hasn't become, that hasn't matured as of yet. Once the market matures, it's going to be a lot less volatile. So these comments are quite unnecessary. Lagarde added that the stable coins present serious risk to the competitiveness and technological autonomy in the European region. She expressed concerns relating to data privacy and the wrong use of personal information by large tech companies. 100% agree with her on that because the likes of Facebook have been obviously caught in the act of selling users' data and a lot of it as well. So if they're able to get more data, more financial data on people, it's only going to be that much more concerning with their background. So I definitely agree with her on that. If widely adopted, stable coins could threaten financial stability and monetary so sovereignty. For instance, if the issuer cannot guarantee a fixed value or if they're perceived as being incapable of absorbing losses, a run could occur. Additionally, using stablecoins as a store of value could trigger a large shift of bank deposits to stablecoins, which may have an impact on banks' operations and transitions of monetary policy. Basically, it means that they will lose control. Simple as that. The, the more you know popular they become, the less control they have. If people start to move their money to stablecoins, as she said, it will be harder to enforce monetary policy, things like interest rates, they won't be able to control the economic climate as they have so far. Not that they've been doing a good job in that, um, you know, trying to manage the economy. But this, I mean, this essentially, because they won't be, they won't be able to um, enforce so many rules and laws, it will be the market that tends to dictate how the economy starts to move around. So. This movement to stablecoins and the uh, uh, the control that they'll be losing the banks is a good thing because it means that it means that the market will always decide what happens in the economy. It's not the banks; the banks will lose control and the people will gain more control. Um, so it's it's a very good thing in my opinion. But as I said. You see, it's always about people's own uh, entities' own interests. They have their own interests at heart. Lagarde is speaking for the banks. So she obviously doesn't want banks to lose control. Hence why she has to obviously bash those stable coins and crypto. Now she's talking about the digital euro. A, properly, a properly designed digital euro would create synergies with the payment industry and enable the private sector to build a new business based on Digital Euro related services. A digital Euro would also be an emblem of the ongoing process of European integration and ultimately help to unify Europe's digital economies. Beautifully said. But as I said, obviously she has to promote her digital coin, her digital currency. Um, but I mean, there's no difference between the Euro now and the digital Euro. It's just going to be digital a bit faster. Um, so I don't know, crypto is the only difference in a new monetary system. This is not going to be any different. So Lagarde said in November that the ECB will launch a digital euro in the next two to four years. Positive sign as we are moving in the digital economy forward, but negative in that they might start to ban stable coins and enforce their digital currency. So, moving over to an article from Crypto Potato regarding Spotify. So, audio streaming mogul Spotify considering cryptocurrency payments, which is obviously very good, but let's read on. Audio streaming giant Spotify wants to integrate Bitcoin, stablecoins, and other cryptocurrency assets as a means of payment for users. So, the, so basically, they have recently just put a job offer for an associate director um, the desired candidate will play, play a key role in navigating the company's payments rather through the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Let's read on. We are now looking for an out, 
outstanding associate director to join our payment strategy and innovation team. The role will report to the director, payment strategy and innovation, and will play a key part in defining and implementing Spotify's payment strategy as well as leading Spotify's activity within the Libra stablecoin project and wider digital asset and crypto, crypto spaces. So I know they that they added the wider part at the end, but really it's all about the Libra stablecoin project, how to integrate that, which will be very, very interesting. Obviously we just um, spoke about Libra and how they've, um, you know, revamped their digital currency to try and get your you know re regulatory approval so i think it's more about the libra project as it is um the likes of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies so this is a, a bit of a misleading article or mis you know misleading statements that they're making and to be honest it does make sense as well you wouldn't want a volatile asset to be you know, integrated into their business and uh, payments because obviously you want stability when it comes to payments like this. And this is just an article I pulled up um, because I didn't know that Spotify was joining or joined the Libra project or association. But they're basically talking about the reason why they joined uh, is to focus so the saying that Libra Foundation was created for a simple global currency and financial infrastructure that will empower billions of people. And there you go again, going back to the other article, that's the original plan to create a simple global currency, not just a dollar backed, but a global currency. And that will empower billions of people. And this reserve backed currency, once created, it will enable everyone everywhere to send spend and save their money through a financial ecosystem powered by secure blockchain technology. Again, don't don't pay attention to this part because it's not really blockchain. It's just digital fiat currency. So there's no decentralized nature in this. One, one challenge for Spotify and its users around the world has been the lack of easily accessible payment systems, especially for those in financially under under underserved markets. This creates an enormous barrier to the bonds we f work to foster between creators and their fans in joining the Libra Foundation. There is an opportunity to better reach Spotify's total addressable market, eliminate friction, and enable payments in mass scale. Now, I definitely understand what they're talking about because <clears throat> if you have one, one global currency, then you can obviously interact with anyone around the world, pay different creators, uh, content creators, and what have you. Uh, and, and, you know, it will make one global community, essentially, as opposed to, you know, different, living in different currency zones. Um, but the fact that it's it's controlled by a few entities is always the problem. It's not decentralized. It's just a bigger version of what we're using right now, controlled by even less entities. So that's a very dangerous thing. Whereas, as opposed to Bitcoin, which is decentralized, no one controls it and you can pay anyone if you wanted to right now across the world there's no it is a global currency so and it's not controlled by any central authority that's the big difference so that'll be the end of this video i hope you got some value from that and i'll see you in the next one peace